Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen. One race to go. The final race of the day here at PF International. The opening round of the 2023 Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Car Championship. It is the biggest field of the day. It is Junior X30. Pole position, Macaulay Bishop for Dan Holland Racing. Fred Green for Jamie Green Racing on the outside of row number one. Ewan Charman for Argenti Motorsport and Taylor Orridge for the Croc Promotion Team on row two. Kenzo Craigie for Argenti Motorsport and Lewis Bird for Croc Promotion start on row number three. Zach Green and Harry Bartle are on row four. Oliver Stilp and Harrison Mackey go from row number five. Kian Geraghty and Lewis Islin share row number six. On row seven, we have Thomas Min Spearing and Riley Cranham with Rocco Shenton and Eden Spanswick on row number eight. David McIntyre and Hardy Mamassi share row number nine. The top 20 rounded up by Samuel Branston and Toby Gale. George Quartermain and Austin Gale share row 11. Ollie Rands and Joseph Smith on row number 12. Isaac Phelps and Jensen Graham start from row 13. Henry Carter and Flynn McDermott on row 14. Alexander Savinkov and Monde Junior Canini on row number 15. Row 16, Morgan Moore and Freddie Lloyd. Tristan Powell and Cathal Clark round out the starting lineup all oh boy not sure if cathal clark has gone out i think we might be down to 33 drivers uh lots of uh, good luck messages from macaulay bishop from uh Mum kitty watching back home she would be here but the motorhome failed its mot i'm told so uh, she's stuck home watching the alpha live youtube channel but don't worry Mason is busy mechanicking for McCordia, making sure that Ian Cordy's dad isn't getting up to any mischief. McCordy, meanwhile, is doing the business out on track. 33 drivers, 15 minutes. This is the finale to the opening weekend of the British Karting Championship of 2023. It's Dan Holland Racing versus Jamie Green Racing on the front row of the grid. Lights are out. We're off and racing here at PF International into turn number one. It's a great start for Macaulay Bishop. Now hold your breath. 33 carts go under the bridge. 33 carts emerge. All facing the right way. It is Fred Green up in a second and Ewan Charman. The Charmander has made an excellent start to maintain third. Oh, a couple of carts coming together. Rocco Shenton is amongst them. Hardy Mimassi for Evolve Motorsport, I think, might be one of the others. Just uh, coming off the bridge there. They both dropped down towards the rear of the field. It wasn't Hardy Mimassi. It was one of the other Evolve Motorsport carts. Oh, actually, it possibly was Hardy Mimassi. So two potential podium finishers already dropping to back, but critically both still in the race and neither of them have, they've lost positions, but they've not been dropped by the rest of the field. Alexander Savinkov, the Ukrainian driver uh, for Argenti Motorsport there, a little bit slow away as well. He has dropped down to the back of the field. But at the end of lap number one, it's driver number four, Dan Holland Racing's McCauley Bishop leading the way as the rest of the field stream across the start finish line to complete the opening lap. Well, Anthony, Macaulay Bishop leads at the moment. I have a feeling, though, it's not going to stay that way for very much longer. Well, it's not been that way for the entirety of the weekend, really, has it? It's been chopping and changing all the way throughout. We've had different race winners. He did take a heat win uh, during the weekend so far as a change for second place. As Fred Green goes through, Taylor Orridge yep. trying to get through failing to do so stays there in p4 you and charman down into third place now uh yeah all, all of them running slightly wide there using all the track available to them and again just keeping an eye on it now the gap is two tenths of a second if nothing happens once again and they start working together that gap will 100 percent close down as riley cranham the number 18 receiving a five second time penalty so early on in the race i suspect start infringement yep that would be uh, out of the tram lines before they got to the start signal. But Bishop Green 
Then the first the identity cards, Charman. Oh, there's a move. Fred Green surprising Macaulay Bishop. He didn't want to hang about. He made his move at a place where perhaps Macaulay Bishop wasn't expecting it. And now Macaulay Bishop has been shuffled back, not to second, not to third, not to fourth, but all the way back to fifth position. Yeah, and uh, there you can see Taylor Orridge on the full defensive there, going into hairpin two to keep Bishop behind and has successfully done just that. Lewis Bird, though, with the fastest lap of the race in the Croc promotion. Currently see him in the back of shot just there, trying to get through. But uh, down in P6 at the moment, as they all now try to negotiate their way through. It was actually, it was uh, Lewis Bird who was defending from Macaulay Bishop. So uh, across the line they go, then you can see here, look at that, Fred Green, fastest lap of the race as well on that one. Had the momentum all the way, oh sorry, Zach. Zach Green with the fastest half of the race now. I got confused, but Zach Green all the way down the field, actually. Where's Zach Green? He is uh, currently... Oh, no, it's Freddie Lloyd now with the fastest half of the race. So three different uh, fastest laps on that one lap and a change for the lead. Speaking of different, Anthony, we've yeah. now got a different cart leading this train as Charman goes past Green with Orridge in third. Bishop fought then Bird, Stilp, Oliver Stilp, Kenzo Craig, Kian Garrity, Harry Bartle and Harrison Mackey are top 10. Zach Green running 11th. Then it's Islin, Spanswick, Cranham, Minspearing, Austin Gale. Don't forget we've got Austin and Toby Gale all the way from Thailand yep. here uh, racing uh, for the first time in the UK. Austin Gale up into 16th position. Monday Junior Canini after that terrible accident at the end of the pre-final has already gained a lot of ground. 13 places he's up into 17th position and Freddie Lloyd the biggest mover in the field. He is up 14 places to 18th spot. Yes, indeed. So, 10 minutes to go, or 11 minutes to go, plus that one lap. Zach Green again, fastest lap of the race, just showing that the pace is all the way throughout this field. Over the bridge they go, down the hill, and again, are we going to see any lunges down in towards hairpin number one this time? Yes, yes we are, from Taylor Orridge, and immediately following is Macaulay Bishop eyeing an opportunity to gain a position and he does so fred green now down into p4 and bishop oh. down the inside at hairpin two goes podding side by side with orange orange checks over the shoulder and bishop gains the corner and fred green follows chopping and changing all the way throughout now the rest of the field has closed in once again look at that trio of mad croc carts the number 66 of orange the uh, number 24 of bird the 43 of oliver stilp all circulating in the waters behind the top three charman bishop and fred green it's now lewis islin who sets the fast lap of the race on to the banking we go with 10 minutes remaining we start lap number six already and fred green passes bishop for second and that was that was orange Having a little nibble at the inside of Bishop. Bishop shakes his head. Well, I've got to say, Macaulay, you were a little bit forceful when you were passing uh, Bishop uh, uh, Orridge a lap ago. And uh, Taylor is simply returning the favour. Oh. Oh, and we've got two Crocs uh, snapping their teeth together there. And one of them, uh, they get to the grass. Oh, here we... There's going to be an awful lot of new contenders battling the race lead up over the curb goes one of the croc cards that was harry bartle now joining the party yes it is indeed and he's actually managed to squeeze his way through the same as the rest of the field just behind there zach green getting involved in this one as well kenzo craig is in there keen garrity's in there harrison mackie's in there as well so there's big changes all the way throughout this field but crucially a breakaway though the top two charm and leads from green still comfortably from orange bishop bird bartle mackie craigie garrity and stilp oliver stilp in P10, the top 10 separated by 3.4 seconds. And uh, you, have the, you have the feel, well, you have the feel that, that gap is going to close, but all depends on, well, the more that these drivers continue b a battling for the, the lower positions in the top dozen, you, that's Kenzo Craig in cart number 44, oh. elbowing one of the croc carts aside. I think that was Oliver Stilp in the number 43 cart, just getting sort of uh, shuffled wide onto the grass box they're all battling and that is allowing charm and green sure charman and green to pull away ever so slightly here comes another move from an argenti cart that is the number 76 of thomas minspearing oh and, and, uh, and round he goes oh i say thomas minspearing was making a move there although that yeah that was minspearing getting sort of interlocked uh, with one of the many crop promotions carts in this race yeah oliver still uh, yeah, Oliver Stilp going down. So, uh, again, rookie driver Oliver Stilp 
and drops to 24th position. Somehow we've got all 33 drivers that started this race still running, Anthony. Cattle Clark didn't go out. Ah. Right, so, well, let's collect our thoughts now. Seven and a half minutes to go. And Charman still leads three tenths of a second from Fred Green. Another two tenths further down is Bishop, who's back up into third place now with that fastest lap of the race. Orridge still there in fourth from Bird and Bartle. Mackey now into seventh place. There's a warning going out to Oliver Still. Well, that was for getting that entangled for... with Thomas Min spearing yes. at the Mike Wilson complex a lap ago. Here we go side by side just in front of this group. Was that? Uh, uh, that looked like uh, Fred Green trying to go for the move there for yeah, the race lead. It was. And now Fred Green does make the move. And look at Bishop trying to tuck into second place uh, to capitalize on Fred Green. Does the work, opens the door. McCauley Bishop nips through like an uninvited guest at the house party. Yes, indeed. Gets it done. Now checks over the shoulder just to make sure. Dives to the inside straight away using that momentum. Not losing any of it. And look at that. Fred oh. Green down from first to fourth in the space of one corner. Now again, chops and changes, fights back for third place, gets back down the inside of Taylor Orridge. Keep an eye though, as Lewis Bird is trying to now close in on this group. Still six and a half minutes left of this race and they're all leaving it to the final race of the day, aren't they? Oh, yeah. The group behind as well though, Bartle, Mackey, Islin, Geraghty, Green, Kenzo, Craigie, Monday Junior, Canini as well, all in that group wanting to close in and they will close in if they keep scrapping like this. You know, Anthony, we've said a couple of times that uh, when PFI holds the last round of the British Championship, it's the best racing we see all year yeah. because people are putting it all on the line for a yeah. British Championship. Sometimes when you see PFI hosting the opening round of the British Championship, it could be a little bit more sedate because drivers are thinking long term. They're thinking, oh, well, you know what? If I don't win this round, I, I want to just make sure I come second or third. I'm not going to risk it all because that means that my championship starts on the back foot. Yeah. It has not been like that today. No. Every single drive in every class has gone absolute hell for leather in their bid. And, and you know, it's a testament. Okay, we've had a couple of incidents and accidents, and I want to touch all forms of wood now uh, just to make sure because we've still got five minutes to go. But we've had the majority of the drives have come on. We had a couple of accidents, but everyone's brought them home safely, the majority of it. Yes, yeah, exactly that. So. Keep an eye on it now. That gap's opened up a little bit here now. Bishop, gap of four tenths of a second as Charman back down the inside. Green fights back. Now Charman oh. under pressure from Bird. Bird still there in P4. Orridge in P5. And now look, the communication here, he was saying, no, work with me. And Charman's like, no, no I, 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 uh, work I with me. not. Now, Dan Holland Racing, normally Dan Holland Racing has got the line. Oh, oh sorry, there we go, that was a lunge. No, this is not what they want to do now because look at that gap, it's just oh, yeah. cr increasing. Bishop's just going to drive away with this one. There's four and a half minutes left. They've got to be careful here. They've got to start working together. Stop squabbling. Yep, Bishop is waving bye-bye because uh, Dan Holland, they've only got two drivers here in yep. the whole paddock. Normally they've got about 157 yeah, yeah, in yeah. like a four mile long awning out in the paddock. Mm. Only two drivers, they're working out. What are the garages here at PFI? Marcus Luzio has already been on the podium. Can Macaulay Bishop go in better and take a win? At the moment, with four minutes to go, the rest of the Junior X30 field are gifting. They're, they're wrapping it up in shiny paper and presenting the win to Macaulay Bishop because as they squabble over second, Bishop checks over his shoulder, head down, wagons roll. Indeed, and again, more changes here. Taylor Orridge oh. back down the inside, and now everyone gets involved. Bartle gets through as well. Now Mackie, Islin, Geraghty, and Green are all involved in this battle. Zach Green, of course, Fred Green still there. Uh, up the oh. further order and round, and uh, there's cards off. There's three off. of them. Oh, my word, some evasive action. Wow, that was, the, uh, that was Lewis Islin in the... Uh, Red and white Birrell ART cart just turning around. One of the jaw, one of the fusion carts. Uh, getting ready. It's the number ten cart of Zach Green involved, and another driver with the nose coat off the cart. Driver in a little bit of a discomfort. It's Harry Bartle. Bartle sat in the cart. I'm watching now on the screen. He is getting up and out of the cart and walking away. I think obviously it's a, maybe a tweak the wrist or something like that. But yeah. More upset than anything else. Once again, the marshals. 
uh, and the race directors on the scene very quickly. We have got two and three quarter minutes to go. That has uh, separated the field quite a bit. We've now got Bishop leading by three quarters of a second over Fred Green. Lewis Bird in third. Orange is fourth. There he is, Orange in cart number 66. Now we've got Ewan Charman in fifth. Harrison Massey, Mackey is sixth. Kean Geraghty for the MDL Motorsport team is in seventh. Then, from the back of the grid, Mondi Jr. Canini up into eighth place. Kenzo wow. Craig is ninth. And Riley Cranham rounding out the top ten. Jensen Graham, Austin Gale, Freddie Lloyd, Hardy Mamassi and Joseph Smith are next. Still big movers as well, further down as well, as including those Morgan Moores up 13 places into P18. Tristan Powell oh, also up to P23. And that was Lewis Bird passing Fred Green for uh, oh, second oh, Fred Green Green fights back though, sorry Henry, no, and no, nearly right. collecting each other on the bridge. And look at that, checks over the shot, I'll be like, what are you let's, doing? Let's not, let's not do that again. Um, yeah, let's, well. uh, let's work together now. I mean, every driver, once they made the move, then they want to work together. Yeah. They're not quite as happy working together when they're the driver you're behind following. Mm, mm. Strange, that. Funny, that, yeah. Yeah, almost the, the teenagers for you. Oh, dear. <laughs> Always contrary. And uh, Macaulay Bishop, meanwhile, there's a great move again from Fred. Well, the, the, the chance to, for the win, I think, is gone. We've got somewhere a minute to go. Bishop is away and cruising. Orridge has timed it really well in the second place. The fight is now on for that final podium position. Jamie Green Racing have already had one podium with Will Green in Water Swift. Now they're looking for their second podium with Fred Green in Junior X30. Yes, indeed. So, like we're saying, we see this uh, so often and again as those two scrap away oh, for third place. It's bringing everyone back into it. Ewan Charman's coming back into the uh, play now. Yep. As he goes oh. down the inside, there's Mackie though. Contact between the two of them and Charman goes wide. Mackie goes through at hairpin one. Uh, well, Harris Mackie, he's got his older brother Lewis mechanicing for him in the Fusion Motorsport team. I asked Lewis to make it. He goes, is he listening to you? And Lewis looks at me and goes, mm, sometimes. <laughs> Not quite sure that was part of the plan. It's gained the position at the moment, but he's now got a very riled up uh, oh. Lewis Bird, Kian Garrity, and Ewan Charman right behind him as Harrison Mackey moves into P4. Cranham 8th, Canini 9th, Kenzo Craigie rounding out the top 10. As we cross the line now, Orange 1.08 seconds as the clock, Anthony strikes zero. Yes, it has. So that gap now has actually come down. Taylor Orridge has closed it by a whisker. Um, it is yeah. still one second, it's, so it's gonna take Bishop Macaulay just needs Bishop. to cruise yeah. it. Yeah, but the only person that can beat Macaulay Bishop now is Macaulay Bishop, I have yeah. to say. Because uh, if Macaulay checks over his shoulder, he, uh, he will see that he doesn't need to defend. And uh, we haven't seen him look over his shoulder, but again, we have, the camera hasn't been following him exclusively, so he may have missed it. But Bishop will be well aware. He, uh, situational awareness is, is perfect with Macaulay Bishop. So he will know, I don't need to defend. I don't just slow myself down. Just run my normal racing line. Orridge will not catch me because he will see the last lap board go out now. He checks over to, there was the glance we saw. He knows that he doesn't have to defend. Orridge is not going to get within striking distance. It's going to be close. Orridge is really pushing it. And Fred Green hanging on to a place on the podium, Anthony. Yes, he really is. Let's keep an eye on that gap as they go through. Eyes still on the battle, though. Further back, Fred Green holding on to third place. You can see there, Mackie furious with Charman as they're still scrapping for position. Mackie to the outside here through hairpin one. Can't hold the position. Now Taylor Orridge, oh no, sorry, Lewis Bird goes down the inside there. Taylor Orridge still in second place and closing in. The gap still for, and there's a look over his shoulder. Uh. Oh, it's that's closed in quite dramatically. Did I speak too soon? Orridge is throwing everything by the kitchen sink of Macaulay Bishop. Are we going to see a last corner lunge? Is Orridge close enough? The answer is no, not quite close enough. Macaulay Bishop for Dan Holland Racing comes out of the final corner and takes the win in Junior X30. Taylor Orridge, a fine second place, and it's yet another podium for Fred Green and the Jamie Green racing team. This has been their best ever day in the British Championship. And I think Uncle Tyrone 
uh, one of the Uncle Tyrone clan, and Gregory has been doing a bit of driver coaching in there for them as well. That is their best day in the British Championship so far. Lewis Bird into P4. Kean Geraghty rounds out the top five for Mark and Dave Litchfield. With Harrison Mackey, the Fusion Motorsport, sixth. Then the Argenti Motorsport team. Well, then uh, Ewan Charman. Fast Freddie Lloyd gains 24 places to go from 32nd to 8th. What a drive for Freddie Lloyd. Ninth is Kenzo Craigie, Mondi Junior Canini from 30th to 10th. Another storming drive for the Fusion Motorsport driver. Riley Cranham, Hardy Mamassi were next up. Jensen Graham and Joseph Smith round out the top 14. Lewis Islin after his spin in 15th position. Then it's Austin Gale, Morgan Moore, Samuel Branston, Toby Gale, Alexander Savnikov, or Savinkov, sorry, Thomas Minspearing, Ollie Rands, Eden Spanswick, David McIntyre, Tristan Powell in 25th position, George Quartermain was next, Isaac Phelps, Flynn McDermott, and Rocco Shenton, with Oliver Stilp finishing 30th, Henry Carter was 31st, and after all that, the only three drivers who failed to finish were Harry Bartle and Zach Green, while Cattle Clark failed to start. McCauley Bishop will take a narrow five-point championship advantage into the second. There he is. He is now, well, he's won races in Iami Cadet, Micromax, Mini X30, Junior X30, and Junior Rotax. He has won rounds of the British Kart Championship in five different classes, more than anybody else in the modern era of the British Championship. But... Uh, we're going to go down to speak. Uh, Anthony's going to be going to speak to the top three in a, a short while. And uh, that will please don't go away. We'll hear from the winning drivers. A big thank you to everyone tuning in on the live stream. Please, you know, go back and share this coverage amongst your families and friends. That would be much appreciated indeed. Um, and obviously, a big thank you to the marshals and the medical team here at uh, Paul Fletcher International. They've been called into action several times today, but they have answered the call perfectly on every occasion. And uh, hopefully that, uh, well, Sam John's the only driver that was uh, a little bit uh, in the back of an ambulance. I think he walked with the ambulance that was a little bit all shook up, uh, shall we say. He's OK as well. But for the last time today, Anthony Jordan has our top three down in the pits. Three, two. Thank you very much, Henry. Yes, down in Park Ferme, here with our race winner, Macaulay Bishop. Congratulations, first round of the season, coming away with a race win. Did you expect it? No, I know it was fast the whole weekend, you know, like putting in solid results. But in the final, it was a bit harder, I think. You know, I got shuffled back a bit, but I managed to make my, my way through. And then going to the lead, got a little bit of a gap, and then just managed it nicely. It was uh, fourth in the championship last year, and you start the season with a win. Is the, uh, the plan to go for that number one? Yeah, hopefully, just how the season turns out. So, going to lots of different tracks, so I should be quite good at a few of them, so, yeah. You're a lone DHR driver in your category. You've only got Marcus Zuzio's in the other class as well here, so not many of you. So, uh, data has been quite thin? Uh, yeah, but, you know, my pace this weekend, I didn't really need it, so that was, like, lucky, I think. Uh, anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank my dad for the mechanic in, uh, Grass for the power, and Daryl for the setups. Well, brilliant. Congratulations, Macaulay Bishop. We'll see you on the podium a little bit later on. Thank you. Excellent stuff there. Let's bring in our second place driver, Taylor Orridge. Well, I'm sure there are many of your uh, fans at home watching this one and thinking congratulations to you. P2 on that one, a solid result. <laughs> yeah, um, it was good. There was just a lot of hacking at the start. Um, obviously, Macaulay got a big gap. And then when we got through that, we just started getting those consistent laps into try breakaway. Well, I mean, again, a tough race all the way throughout. There was battles uh, that actually kicked off quite a lot in the uh, middle as well of that race, as, uh, as well as the end. Can you talk us through some of the best bits? Yeah, well, I thought everyone was going to start working together, but then there was just loads of jostling. Everyone wanted to go first. And then, well, McCauley just got a big gap, and he, play he played his cards right. He got the move done well, and he just got that gap. When you see a gap like that opening up uh, for the race lead, does it get a bit frustrating wanting to get to the front and that's where the time really gets lost instead of working together? Yeah, well, I was just like being really calm about it. I didn't really want to shaft anyone and 
just started pushing with everyone, but then everyone just started battling, so I thought I just had to get to the front, and then that's when I got my gap. Well, it's still a solid result with P2. Anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, of course, Grice for the motors, everyone in Croc, who just helped me over the weekend, and that's about it. Solid result. We'll see you on the podium, P2, there for Taylor Orridge. Let's bring in Fred Green. Come on over, Fred. Well, again, uh, we saw Will on the podium earlier on today. Now yourself. Uh, it's been a solid weekend for the uh, Jamie Green team. Yeah, it's been pretty good. First few podiums for the team, so that's always a bonus. But could have been better in both classes, I think. Had the pace to, but not quite good enough in the final. Still a solid way to start the season, coming away with a podium on the first round. Is that a nice incentive for the rest of the season? Yeah, definitely. I think we have pace around every track, so I think we're just getting started, really. Yeah. Uh, of course, next round's coming up uh, in a few weeks' time, and uh, is it a track that you're looking forward to? Is it GYG? I believe so. Yeah, it should be a good round there. I think we'll be all right around everywhere, really. Yeah. Well, anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, Jamie Green Racing, Aventus Power, and my mechanic, Andy. Well, solid result. We'll see you on the podiums a little bit later on. Congratulations, though, to Fred Green. Uh, and again, for all of our drivers who finished this one on the podium. Heza, come on in, lad. First round back, yes. season started. Boom. Boy, I'm looking forward to the next one. Uh, you know, what a great way to start proceedings. Again, a little bit of uncertainty over some of the new classes. I've got to say that Water Swift, for those that doubted the Water Swift class, those doubts can be put to bed because the racing was excellent. Lots of different teams in action, lots of different chassis, lots of different engine tuners. It's not just a two-team battle. We saw some great racing today. We saw Oliver Roller Motorsport. They've broken their victory drought. We saw Classer Motorsport. They've taken a win. We saw Jamie Green Racing ascend to main contenders in the British championship after several years of being nearly there but not quite it's a really mixed up season the tkm classes if you haven't entered the tkm classes that was the best advertisement for tkm racing get your entries in you can still do it it's been great to be back aboard our four season together yep. one two three four four yep a lot of races to go can't wait to you know, be part of it all. We've got a couple of guest commentators this year as well to spice things up because, you know, variety is the uh, uh, spice of life and all that. But, yeah, great way to start yeah. the Vera Tools Motorsport UK 2023 British Championship season. It is indeed. And we are back in two weeks' time. You can catch us at Kim Bolton. Moving on now to Junior X30, race 26 of the weekend. And again, another absolutely fantastic race. Starting with third place, started on second place, dropped down to third, but nonetheless comes away with a podium after 17 laps of racing. Please welcome onto the podium number 51 for the Jamie Green Racing Team, Fred Green. <laughs> Moving on to second place, as congratulations to Fred after again 17 laps of racing, separated by just three tenths of a second, very close at the end. Please welcome onto the podium number 66 for the Croc Promotion Racing Team, Taylor Orridge. <laughs> His suit is in the post. Go on, Taylor, well done. On to our race winner then. And again, very close at the end after 17 laps of racing. Started on pole position, the number four seed from last year. Please welcome for Dan Holland Racing, Macaulay Bishop. Yes. And his winning mechanic, Mason Bishop, who makes his way up onto the podium. Where's Mason? There he is. Make your way up, lad. Brilliant. Again, another fabulous podium. Take your time, Mason. Take your time, Macaulay. Well done. Get your hats on. That smile for Chris. Well done. Well done. Chris Walker. Now, guys, if you jump up onto that top podium for us, please. Group photo. Group photo. You don't have to go. You can if you want, though. Go on. Go 
Well done. Last final round of applause then, please, for your Junior X30 finalists.